Hi, and welcome to Dramatic Knits. My name is Steve, also known as Dramatic Knits. And I'm Callie, also known as Calsters. And today is Monday, March... 19th, 2018. 2018. When you work from home anymore and you travel all the time, it's like you lose track of your days. Um, this is episode 303, so thank you so much for joining us this episode. If you're new, hopefully you enjoyed today's show and you'll come back in the future. And if you're a returning viewer, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for coming back one more episode. So we are squeezing this episode in by like the merest of minutes, not really, but close, um, as I am home for 24 hours before I hit the road again. So we're trying to record this and get it edited and uploaded and everything before I leave bright and early tomorrow morning. So um, we're going to get into a quick two weeks in review for ourselves before we get to all the knitting, and I've got a lot to show today. <laughs> so um, yeah, so what's been going on the past two weeks? I mean, pretty much everything under the sun. Um, Got new phones, that's super exciting, but um, my old phone decided to have its battery keep expanding where the screen was literally popping off the phone, so we needed to upgrade, and of course Andy was like, you know, we don't need to get really expensive phones, blah blah blah, and then we get there and he's like, why get outdated technology? So we got the iPhone X's that are weird and unlock with your face, and we've realized that he can unlock my phone. So there's that. Um, we have gotten so many times, not even at knitting events, in the grocery store, going into Walmart in the pharmacy line, like everywhere, people think we're brothers. And uh, we just kind of laugh it off and go, no. no. <laughs> um, but, you know, it is very true what they say. The longer you've been with your significant other, the more you start to look like them. So, so anyway, he can unlock my phone with his face, but I cannot unlock his phone with mine. I don't know. So we got new phones. Um, we had a little, not snafu, a little shock of um, some taxes being done at the end of the year in terms of uh, money owed, but uh, we think everything will be okay in the long run. It's just a little, it's kind of a punch in the gut. Um, so that was a bit surprising, but at least we kind of will learn from it, right? And move forward. Um, and we have been lining up a lot of new fun things in this coming year. Uh, I've went to knitting a few times, um, things of that nature. But uh, yeah, this last week, Andy and I went up to St. Charles, Illinois, and on Wednesday, and we visited one of our retail stores, Wool and Company, and it was a lovely shop. Angela, the owner, was a very gracious host and said hi to us, and you know gave us a tour around the store, and um, one of her assistants helped us as well. I'm sorry, I can't remember her name, um, but she was lovely as well, and I might have got a goodie or two there, which I'll show off later. Um, and they have a lovely downtown area, and so like right next door, literally, was a um, Italian restaurant, so we had a nice Italian dinner kind of early um, before heading over to the Fox Valley Knitters Guild um, monthly meeting where Andy and I were vending our yarns, and I was the featured pres um, presenter for that meeting to talk about all things leading men fiber arts and running a business and independently dyeing yarn and things of that nature. So um, that was a lot of fun. The crowd was really good. And um, I even ran into a few ladies this weekend, and they said they really enjoyed my presentation. So um, I'm always happy to hear that. It was a bit odd having Andy in the audience because I've done this presentation now about a handful of times, and he's not usually there. So, you know, I kind of make some jokes at his expense, which was interesting to do in front of him. But so um, that was Tuesday and we got back. I was exhausted and slept for a lot of the drive back because I drove up there. And so it was one of those like head lolling to each side. And I think at one point my head was propped in the um, driver, the, the seatbelt, you know, kind of just planted. You've all done that at some yeah. point, right? Yeah. Like you plant your forehead in the yep. seatbelt to keep your head up. Um, it's when it leaves a mark that sucks. Yeah. Like. It just, well, and there was one point, like I was getting a kink in my neck cause it was all weird. I don't know. So, cause we didn't get home till after midnight and that was, that's real late for us anymore. Um, and then we, um, I got up early because my sister and I went to visit our friend Amber um, unfortunately, Callie was working, so I'm busy, but, um, we drove down there and we had a good day of just chitting, chit-chatting and 
knitting and um, learning some new crochet techniques for myself. And um, my sister got to play with her pets, which was super exciting for her. Um, and then Friday morning we got up and we drove to Madison, Wisconsin for the Madison Knitters Guild Knit-In. And we set up on Friday and the show was Saturday and Sunday and we got to see our friend Laura of the Knit Girls. She was teaching out there so we got to see her as well as run into Laura Nelkin um, and a few other people which was really great. And so if you were able to stop by at the Knit-In, thank you so very much. As always, I appreciate that. And if you are ever at an event that we are at, please do come up and say hi. We're talking to an iPad, we can't see you. So if you recognize me, you gotta come up and say hi. Plus I'm not totally socially awkward, just a, just a scotch. But, so it's not, <laughs> it's not always the easiest for me to approach people, but. You can always come up to me, regardless if you know me or not, I mean, that's kind of how people approach me. Grocery store, my 4-H parents, my 4-H kids. And mind you, for our county, we have 1,300, so I don't know everybody. <laughs> so. Very true. Very true. So anyway, um, that's been my past two weeks. I don't think anything really else huge has happened. Oh, we bought life insurance. <sighs> Super fun. That is um, adulting at its finest. Yeah, and I just had to schedule an at-home physical for both of us for life. I guess that's a thing you have to do. Like, they have to do a physical for you and all that. All, 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 all. But basically, we both, I requested that we have enough life insurance that if anything happens to either one of us, the other one can run the business and not, you know, we can't run the business now anymore with just two hands. Right. It's, luckily, thanks to everybody's support, it's, um, it's a two- to three-man show, so... Um, so there was that. So we have to do that next week. That's, oh, whatever. But, yeah. So, what have you been up to? Work, work, and work. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but work. Um. You better work, 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 work. It's true. Um, so, like, this is, this is pertinent to my past two weeks, but, um, so I'm on this new blood pressure medication and um, my doctor was like, you really need to monitor it and you need to take your, like do testing at home or at work or wherever, you know, just kind of see. And I'm not gonna lie, I felt like super tired these last couple of weeks and I thought, well, it's been a year since my thyroid surgery and I mean like, they did remove a huge chunk and I'm not on thyroid medication. So like maybe it's time now that I need to be on it. No, I tested every hour on the hour while I was at work today. And like, it is super low. Like my blood pressure is low. And so I'm like, Oh, that makes sense why I'm tired so much. But, um, like, it's such an odd sensation because, like, I feel very chill. Like, I feel very calm. It's like being on a Xanax or, yeah, right? Yeah. All day, but, like, tired at the same time. And I was like, and I had a little bit of a anxiety issue last night. And I was like, maybe I'll take one of my anxiety th meds. And I was like, no. Nope. Because I don't know what's going on. <laughs> like, I feel like I would have probably killed myself in my sleep. And I was like, no, we don't need that. We don't need that. So, anyways, um, I have a follow-up with my doctor. Um, it's supposed to be this week, but I don't know if she's going to keep that schedule or not. So, we shall see. Um, but it's, it's wild. Um, and, yeah, it's just been... It's been an interesting last couple of weeks at work and um, yeah we do we did a uh, secret pals and found out my secret pal was my work wife so that was exciting on our team and we got new secret pals and I'm really excited about the person that I got for this round because um, they're super easy to buy for they're super appreciative of everything and it's just like good people and I really enjoy that I mean like I love having this individual on our team anyways but like now you get to spoil them a little bit extra and that's awesome so I'm really excited not awesome. that you guys are gonna tell who my secret pal is but you know 
in case if they come across this, I'm not going to say. Well, let's talk some finished objects, because I've got a handful. I have dish class, but I'm going to save those for the next time, so that way it's kind of like a month. And I still haven't woven in ends. And I saw that shout out, Amber. Saw that. <laughs> All right. Well, I literally have a handful. I have five finished objects because I finished like everything on the drive home yesterday from Madison. Because again, I drove all the way up there on Friday. So Andy drove home and I was like, sweet. <laughs> and I'm going to get a lot more um, driving time over the next week. Um, but the first thing I finished, well, not the first thing, but the first thing in my notes are my simple Skype socks, um, or Skip, S-K-Y-P, um, by Adrian Koo, and I knit these for Andy. The body of the sock is out of skein top draw sock in the static colorway that was kindly gifted to me. And the contrasting cuff, heel, and toe is Leading Men Fiber Arch Showstopper Intermission in the saffron colorway and these were knit on a size 1 US which is a 2.25 millimeter needle and you can see there the fun skip stitch there <coughs> and I am in love with these socks so these are not blocked but uh, they will be once I return back home in about a week I have no time to do any of that <laughs> Um, but so yeah, I finished these off yesterday. I finished the toe and I was like, sweet, got another pair of socks off the needles. He's got two pairs of socks in like the last month. So finish those for the win. ZK team love. Um, then I finished another basic worsted weight hat out of the Tangelo colorway. This is Leading Men Fiber Arts box office in the Tangelo colorway, and it's coming out a much redder and pinkish. It's an orangey red. Um, and this is one of my smaller ones, my more beanie style fitted ones on 88 stitches. Again, the recipe is on any of my hat project pages on Ravelry. And um, this was knit on a size six for the brim and an eight for the body of the hat. So there's that. One hat. And then I finished another hat that was the design I Was a Teenage Mutant by Alex Tinsley. And this was a pattern from the book Doomsday Knit, which was um, published by Cooperative Press. And this used Barocco Boboli in color 5320 or Ceylon, C E Y L O N which is a worsted weight, and I used a size 7 US 4 millimeter needle. As you can see there, it's got garter stitch on the brim, and then stocking it for the body, but what's really cool, can you see there, I'm sorry our lighting, we got a lot of natural light. Um, can you see the folded brim there? So you actually kitchener the two sides together, and then you kitchener the top and back over that. So it's a folded brim, a tucked brim, which is really cool. So I enjoyed that. I liked this hat a lot. I don't know if I'll be making a ton more, but it was fun to do. Simple enough, but yet easy construction. So, um, yeah. So I enjoyed that. And then I finished another basic hat yesterday on the road. And, or no, this was at the show actually. This is um, another 88 stitch um, worsted weight hat out of Barbie's Nighty again, Leading Men Fiber Arts box office. Going to town on the hats. So, um, both of these are going to be donated um, to the Operation Chemo Comfort Hat Drive Knit Along that we are doing in the fall. Um, but this one, as well as a few of my other recently finished objects, um, I've decided to give it a try again. Um, I've put a few things up on Etsy, so if you're interested, I do have an Etsy store, Dramatic Knits. Um, where I put a few of my finished objects that don't have a good home as of right now um, because I knit to knit and so I'm not going to be mass producing anything I just knit um, to get to knit to be therapeutic for me and so if I can find a good home I'd really appreciate that so um, so that one's in that list and then well wait there's more my last one I finished this on the road yesterday I knit a honey cowl for the first time ever which um, got a lot of attention while I was knitting it because the stitch seems super um, interesting, but is super simple. Oh, yeah. um, and I knit an in-between size, um, one skein of worsted weight. This is out of Dreaming Color Classy in the Milky Spite colorway. 
Um, I have no idea what that is in reference to. Um, and I did not even write this down in my show notes. I forgot this one. Um, the Honey Cowl is by somebody. It's free on Ravelry. Um, super easy. And I loved this color. It's very Eastery, um, which is coming up here at the end of the month, which may be the next day that we record unless you have plans. But we'll talk about that after recording. Mm -hmm. So you can see there the kind of slip stitch texture. And so I like, I like it for an accent or, you know, you can do the fold it over and then put your coat up. So <clears throat> there's that. So I finished the cowl. And I have no idea where this is going to go. This may end up in the store as well. So there's that. That isn't unblocked either because I finished that on the road yesterday. So that's what I finished. All right. Do you want to go into where you're working on? We'll flip flop. Oh, uh, sure. I'm right in the middle of the row, so. Um, I am working on the switch pattern. It's by Spruce Lane Designs, and I'm using a stitched together yarn in the zebra corn uh, colorway. And um, there's four total pattern sections, and I am starting the fourth one. Um, so from the last time that we recorded, I knit from here all the way to where I'm at now. So um, got a fair bit done, especially because I had messed up and I set it aside and I did some math and math is not my favorite thing. And so that took a lot out of me. It's like super easy, but like in thinking about it, double checking it. Um, so, um, and I was telling Steve before we sat down to record, um, other than the designer, I'm the only person knitting this right now. And it's super easy. Um, it's just, you have to be mindful of where you're at in the pattern. So, um, and I think it, in a very honest statement, I think that some of it could be worded a little bit better. Um, and uh, I, I don't like to say this, but I think that I probably will contact the designer and say, I think that maybe this could read better because, um, well, no one else has knit it. I mean, I feel like at this point, you know, it might be helpful. Um, and I did stitch counts for each grouping of the repeat. So there's two basic sections and I like two basic like groups of rows and I did the math for each of those groupings within the bigger pattern. So um, I have those numbers and if the individual would like to use them then more power to them but if they don't then that's their decision too and I respect that so yeah. Cool. Um, I'm only working on one thing, and that is another basic hat that I cast on yesterday. Um, and I'm calling this one my sweater on the sea hat um, because I'm using, again, Leaving Men Fiber Arts box office um, in the Danes at Sea in the Great Sweater Debate. So I'm doing a contrasting brim on this hat, and I'm loving it. And so here you go. You got the navy blue brim with the great sweater debate hat. And then I'm gonna flip it for a second hat and I'm gonna do the sweater debate on the brim and the navy hat. So, and that one's gonna be Danes on De Danes in Debate is what I'm gonna call the other hat. Yeah, I thought about this <laughs> yesterday because I think about things too much. Again, this is knit on a size six for the brim and eight for the body on the hat. So that's all that I'm working on. I really haven't given my granny square blankets much love. Um, I learned how to join um, while over at Amber's, um, and actually I did, I was like, I'm going to do what Amber, whatever Amber does. And then I was like, but I don't want to do it that way, Amber. So we watched a video and I learned a different way, but I had forgot the yarn that I wound to do all the edgings. And so I kind of learned and then had to rip it out because I had yarn here at home that I am planning on doing. So I'll show you those as I start to put those together. All right, um, what is in rehearsal? Again, more hats. I have plan on knitting a couple over my trip to Connecticut over the next week, um, as well as when I get back, I do want to cast down that Architecture Scarf by Jennifer Weissman, um, but I don't think it's a good travel project. And so since I'm going to be traveling, um, I'm going to put that on hold until I get back, but hopefully it'll be cast on um, by the time that we get back 
Um, I will talk about this project bag in a minute, but um, I did put in my bag two skeins of sock yarn. The first one is a skein of Regia um, 4 ply in color 04458 that I got on sale before. I have a bunch of these um, that I'm going to do. And then I also put in a skein of Opal um, in color, it's in the pop the cork colorway. I remember that much. So I thought this would pull from the inside like the Regia Perfex kind of, not that I expected them to be perfect, um, but no, they pull from the outside. So that's gonna be interesting. But, but I put two sets of needles in here or four sets. So I could do potentially both socks at the same time. Um, but I think that's the best thing to travel with while I'm gone. So that's what I'm going to be working on over the next couple of weeks. Um, I'm hoping to finish this up and um, finish a pair of socks that I forgot that I had. Um, they just need the heels, so that won't be all that much. And I'm currently one and a half dish class ahead of schedule, so. Nice. I know, it feels good. Still haven't woven in the ends, though. Um, let's talk about behind the scenes, my spinning. I finished probably one of the most amazing skeins of hand spun, and I don't have it because I sold it this weekend. Yeah, I sold actually like three quarters of my stock of hand spun. I might have only had four skeins, but I <laughs> sold three of them and I was super excited, but then like, oh, I've, this is the first time I've had a decent amount of hand spun. So, um, but I spun, I uh, finished spinning Yarn Geek Fibers Polworth in the odd duck colorway, and it was in one of a kind. And I spun one ply, which was a dark gray to a dark in fuchsia. And then I spun another ply, which was a neon rainbow, and I plied them together. And uh, that was the first one to go out the door on Saturday. Um, so I nabbed that real quick. So, And I got 462 yards of a fingering weight, which I was really pleased with for my own hand spun. So, um, but you can check my hand spun project page on Ravelry. And I do have pictures there. Um, sorry, I just due to time constraints and uh, I'm not going to edit a photo in. But uh, I did use my random number generator and I picked my newest fiber I'm spinning. And that is some first draft Ramboulet in the road trip colorway. And this was a um, SSK exclusive colorway or premiered there um, two years ago, I think. That's when we went together, right? Yep. 2016. Yeah. So it's oranges and grays and purples. And so I'm gonna do a two ply fractal spin on this. And this is the second two ounces, so. There's that. Was that the goodie bag? Yeah, yarn? the goodie bag fiber. Fiber. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about in the scene shop, what are we doing in terms of other crafting? Um, I am cross stitching, which I'm on a string. Oh God, okay. And um, I finished the word moment. It will say live life in the moment. This is a dimensions kit. And I'm working on all this kind of speckled aging down here. Whatever you want to call that little accoutrement at the bottom. I do need to go back and backstitch in the mo or moment. And then I can w move on up here. But again, I doubt you'll see much progress um, before we record again. Because again, I don't take this on the road. And I will be gone. There's that. Are you doing anything else? I am not. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, in the spotlight, what are we watching and reading? Um, still a little bit of Frank and Gracie. Enjoying that. Or Grace and Frankie. Yeah, whatever. But, uh, again, makes me laugh out loud. Um, watched an episode of Altered Carbon, um, which is a Netflix original. Enjoying that. And I think we're only one or two episodes behind on The Alienist. And Will and Grace. And we did watch a movie which was stellar, which was like Mike and Dave Need a Wedding Date, which stars Zach Afron and Anna Kendrick. Um, I would not recommend it. I thought it was kind of extremely dumb and not well acted. Um, I do like Anna Kendrick, but there was one really good joke in there, though, that almost like I pulled a muscle in my back because it just the timing, the comedic timing was real good. Um, but other than that, uh, would not give that the thumbs up. And I may have not finished, may or may have not finished a book. I can't remember. Um, so, 
there's that. I think that's all we're watching. Um, last weekend I went and saw my friend Reggie in his play, and it was called All the Way, I believe, but it's about um, from the time that LBJ gets sworn in on Air Force One through his um, election and acceptance of the um, presidential nomination and uh, the things that went on behind the scenes with that, um, everything as far as like MLK involvement as well as um, the politics that is elections and that kind of thing. So it was really well done. Uh, and as a side note, we went um, to grab drinks and an appetizer or two afterwards um, at the little brewery that's like down the block from the theater. And there was another individual that was in the cast and um, it was so like surreal because like everybody knew who Reggie was from the play and then from other things that he's acted in in Springfield. So like my friend Samantha and I were eating and drinking with Reggie and like we kept getting interrupted by all these people that were like oh my gosh are you are you were you in you know da 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 and we were like this is what it's going to be like when you get real famous <laughs> he was like it's not it, it was just it was funny to be in that moment um and then as far as things I'm reading I'm reading a young adult novel called uh the girl in the well or yeah um, it's odd. It's not my usual style of reading. Uh, it's laid out a little funky as far as editing goes. And really the only reason why I'm sticking with it is because there's one of the like supporting characters in this so is named Callie and I feel like I got to support that. So, um, yeah, it's odd. It's really odd. It's not my breed of reading. So, I don't know. I like it's been a struggle to like read it, but I am really far on my goal, my Goodreads goal. So there's that. That's all. All right. Dash enhancement. I got it. I ain't gonna be ashamed of it no more. I held myself back for at the show this weekend, but um, as I said, we visited Wool and Company in St. Charles. And they have a whole display of Brooklyn Tweed, which I've never seen in person. And so they had a trunk show from them as well with a lot of their samples. And I had actually seen this particular pattern that I bought yarn for um, somewhere. And I was like, oh, I like that. Um, and so I picked up yarn for the Bevel Scarf. It's a mitered, gartered scarf. And it looks like that. And they were so great at Woolen Company. Um, they offer you to be able to purchase patterns in store um, and they gift it to you on Ravelry. And they also did complimentary co um, printing for me as well. So um, that was really nice of them to do. And so I've got the pattern and I picked up five skeins of Brooklyn Tweed Loft, which I've never tried. I know some people either love it or hate it because of its um, woolen spun nature. So woolen spun means that it is spun um, not as densely and it has a lot more air in it which means it's much loftier and lighter um, and warmer but that also due to that nature it can come apart if you put too much um, tension on it so i picked up two skeins of cast iron um, for the main body of the scarf so it's this lovely black really dark gray and then my three contrasting colors. I played with like three color combos and then I put this one together like super quick. It was like, okay, this is what I want. And of course it's my normal palette. But um, the lightest one here is Snowbound. And then, trying to hold all these. We've got Faded Quilt. And these are 50 gram skeins. And then, Tartan. It's my jam right there. So these together <laughs> with these here. It's pretty. So, and I think I'm actually going to wear this. I think this will be a good accoutrement to um, my um, North Face next winter. So, 
or whenever it gets done. Or begins. Yep. Hashtag no shame. So there's that. And then I was kindly gifted by a friend one of um, these awesome project bags, which were um, the shop just launched. And I have seen the prototypes for these um, almost a year ago now. Um, these have been kind of in the makes. But this is um, Project Bags by Matt, who is multi-crafty guy on Instagram and Ravelry. And he opened his Etsy shop, Multi-Crafty Guy Makes, or um, M-C-G-M, right? M-C-G-M. I can do um, abbreviations. Um, and he upsources um, men's shirts and jeans as well. And so this is the top portion of a plaid shirt that he's made into a project bag. And then he has also has versions where he's cut the bottom of the shirt, like the excess from this, and he puts um, like a jean denim bottom to it to use all parts of the shirt. So what's really awesome is this is sewn, the buttons here is sewn down, but you've got pockets on the front that you can store little notions in. And it's totally my jam. I love plaid. And so the person who gifted me this totally has my number. And they know that I'm super, super, super happy with it. It is a lovely size. It is going to hold all my sock progresses for going on my trip this week. And um, it's got a lovely contrasting burnt orange inside. So I just, I love this. And I almost bought one on his store opening. And I held myself back because I've got a whole closet behind me lined with hangers of project bags. And I was like, no. And so um, to be gifted one was really super awesome. So very high quality work. I love even the little detail of the V here with the stitching of the shirt on the back. And um, yeah, so that was a nice, nice little addition. And um, yeah, so there's that. That's all my stash enhancement. I may have bought some sugar and cream, but I didn't bring it because it didn't feel like it was really quality stash. I got some in there you should take home if you're doing your dish clothes. But uh. I do think that um, I was talking with a friend last night and um, I really am trying to budget for this huge trip that I want to do. So in that, I think that it will be a no yarn, no book, like really no excess kind of spending for a few solid months. So we shall see how that plan goes. <laughs> Fingers uh, crossed. Yeah. So. All right, let's get to this episode's giveaway. So I met the lovely proprietress behind Yarn Socks while at the Madison Knitters Guild Knit In this weekend. And she was in the, um, the Folds booth. And she just launched this company about a month and a half ago, and um, Yarn Socks. And I will link her website on the show notes. And she kindly gifted me um, a pair of this, which I took one, and Callie has the other. And she gifted another pair to the podcast. So, um, and, yeah, I'll just say her name's not on here. Sorry, I forget. But um, there are, they, they are socks for your balls, is what they are. They're, they're little sporty, stretchy nylon, open-ended socks for your yarn balls. Um, now, I tried this right away, and then I realized you kind of need to pull from the center of your ball. So if you pull from the outside, this may not be for you. Um, but if you do pull from the center of your yarn cake, then um, this would be awesome. So you just take the your yarn cake, you put this over it, it keeps, um, you know, things from getting awry and you're losing your loose end of your yarn, um, things of that nature. You know when you have the, if you pull from the inside, you've got that loose end on the end and it can get wound up around mm -hmm. the center one. So um, these are awesome. So you can win a set of blue this week. Um, you can visit her website, which is yarnsocks.com. She's based out of Elgin. And um, she does have a Facebook and Instagram group. I did ask her, um, how much these retail for and she said $11.99 but she does do deals that if you purchase so many you get free shipping if you purchase them like five you get one free plus free shipping so um, check out her website there's a lot of good deals there as well 
And I decided to also pair this with a book that our fairy yarn mother gifted to us. And this is Shades of Winter Knitting with Natural Wool by Engel uh, Johansson um, and Ewa K. Anderson. But uh, yeah, so as we're moving out of winter, let's uh, knit Shades of Winter. <laughs> um, so, but anyway, I just thought these could go together and... Um, yeah, so to enter for this, we already have a thread open in the Ravelry group. You must be a member of the group. You can only post once to be entered, and you must enter the prompt. This week's prompt is, what is the best thing about living in your city? I want to know. I want to know where you're at. What's the best thing about living in your city? If you don't want to tell me where you're at, that's fine. But kind of nice to know, you know, when we talk about that. So that's this week's giveaway. So, last episode, we were giving away a project bag from Cookies Colors on Etsy. And you guys really wanted this bag because there was a lot of people who entered. I just want to note, um, so if you are a stationary enthusiast, this is Rifle Paper & Co. This is their fabric line. Um, they, I don't know how many people are big fans of Keds, like Ked Shoes. Um, but Rifle Paper & Co. has a line, exclusive line with Keds, and this is actually one of their fabrics that they have on their Keds. Because when we ha when you got it and you first showed it to me before we recorded, I was like, gosh, that fabric looks familiar, but can't place it. And so, that's where it's at. Then the light bulb went off. Yeah. Well, good to know. Well, I did pull for a winner. We had over 100 people enter, and um, number 94 was the winner, and that's DPNs for now, and that's Jan from Iowa. So congratulations, Jan. Awesome. Last week's prompt was, what is your favorite um, fabric in Cookie Shop, or what fabric would you love to see in a project bag? And um, she said she liked the insect jars, that it reminded her of a high school science class. So obviously she must have a love for science, at least when she was in school. And she said that she would like to see a succulent print or a camp camping print in a fabric, so yes. in a project bag. So congratulations, Jan. If you would please contact me, Dramatic Knits, on Ravelry, um, and I will get this out to you as soon as I can. Again, I'm going to be gone for a week, so um, don't expect it to ship while I'm gone. But uh, when I get back, I'll get this out to you as long as I hear back from you. So I need your first and last name and mailing address, please. All right, let me get this tag fixed here for a second. So there's that. And then we want to remind you to enter all your finished objects that you finished this month in the month of March into our race March 2018 Race to the Finished Object Contest. Um, we will have two prizes. We'll randomly pull for two people. It doesn't matter when you started the project, but it must be finished in March. Um, we'll have a physical prize as well as a pattern from our featured designer, who is Shelby Hamden. So you've got um, a good couple of weeks, two more weeks left to do that for March. Anything you'd like to add? Nope. All right. Moving on into center stage, all things leading men fiber arts. I don't have a lot to talk about today. Um, I do have our new colorway for April, but I'm going to wait to show that to you until we record next, which is April 1st, hopefully, um, which is Easter Sunday. Um, but I already have it knit up and I have it swatched and drying right over there and you can't see it. It's nice. It's a subtle one this month, so I'm excited. Um, so all I have to tell you about is upcoming shows. So over the next two weekends, we're going to be in Hartford, Connecticut next weekend. We're leaving bright and early tomorrow to get out there. Um, and we're going to be there for Stitches United. If you are in the area and can stop on by, we'd love to see you. We're going to be in booths three or 601 through 605. Um, and we're in the upper right hand, left hand corner. When you walk in the door, turn left. We're all the way at the end and up front. And um, yeah, we're looking forward to seeing all of you and meeting new people out in that area. We've not been out there before, so super excited to do that. Um, if you are coming to the market, I did post on Instagram as well as Facebook and Ravelry that I have put out there a $3 off your marketplace um, coupon so that you can get $3 off your admittance. All you need to do is print off that coupon. It says courtesy of Bleeding Men Fiber Arts and you get $3 off your ticket in the door. 
Um, the following weekend, Easter weekend, on March 31st, Saturday, we will be doing a trunk show at Black Sheep Yarn and Fiber in Noblesville, Indiana. We were out there last fall. We had a great time. They invited us back, and we said absolutely. So their shop is open from 10 to 4 p.m., and we will be there all day. Um, and stop on by, peruse our yarns, check out her lovely yarn store, which is in an old um, home and they have different rooms set up for different types of yarns and it's really quaint and lovely. So um, the, if you're in the Indianapolis area, Noblesville is just a hop, skip, and a jump out of the city. So um, we hope to see you there on March 31st. We have tons more shows coming up. You can see all of the shows that we are currently lined up for on our show slash festivals page on our website. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, click on that link and it'll show you by month where we are going to be. We are going to be everywhere. Um, if you are in the Midwest and you'd like to see your shop carry Lady Men Fiber Arts, we are accepting new wholesale clients as well as if you want us to do a trunk show, we might be able to fit you in. We'd have to look at the calendar, but let your shop owners know to contact us. It is leadingmenfiberarts at gmail.com and we can work something out. So, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, hopefully we'll see each other in two weeks. And I can talk about our travels across country the other way. And uh, Callie will keep you updated about health and work and yeah. fitness and her knitting and all the washcloths. I will say just ahead of time because I know it'll get asked because I get asked every year and I'm, I, I don't um, I don't want this to sound negative. I really do appreciate being asked. Um, but uh, YarnCon this year. Um, I have a huge work event on that Saturday of YarnCon. So if I do end up going to YarnCon, it will most likely be Sunday. But this is a huge event that I'm responsible for from the planning to the completion of it. So I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I may be dead to the world the next day. So so don't plan on it, yeah. probably. But if you're there on Sunday, it might be a nice surprise if I am there. So, but yeah. But we'll be there. We'll be there, and we're looking forward to seeing old and new friends. Yeah. And um, Amber is going to be joining us again this year. So if you um, are in our booth, you can stop on by and say hi. We got some new things to show off, and that'll be the first weekend in April. That's where I like. I'm really, I'm from what I'm doing. I might swing back up to Chicago, but I would be in a big old pickup truck, and I don't know. <laughs> Like, I'm going to have to stay somewhere, so it'll be a little crazy to find somewhere to park with that. Anyways, that's for me to worry about, not for y'all to worry about. So anyway, until we see you in two weeks. We hope you. Knit something. Dramatic.